Wake up. You posted bail. I really? Who who posted it? Was it the um Buckley, that guy I came in with? The Buck I don't even fucking know his last name. No, he's still being held. Uh, get up. Let's go. Whole world's waiting. Some things it's better not to know. The truth is not always pretty. Can I help you with that cock ring? No. Uh, no, I got this. I was just checking. I know more about you from your sister than you. The, the night I told you, you just shut down. Did I run? Not yet. Not yet? They all leave. Who leaves, Jillian? My dad. My ex. Med. Lieutenant Olivia Benson. Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You and your husband get into a fight recently? Nothing unusual. I'm not gonna pretend like we had some picture-perfect marriage, but I didn't kill him. I love my husband. Well, you see, this is a VIP event. You two are very important people. Uh, Ooh, straightforward. Look, Miss Lopez, we really appreciate the hospitality. Well, then you'll really appreciate this. Welcome again to uh, Way Off the Record. Rachel Green, how are you? I'm good, honey. Nice to mm. see you. <laughs> this is, I realized today, um, in getting ready for tonight, this chat we're having, um, is nearly like seven days out of a year since our first time when you came to the apartment. We had like a proper conversation. Not that this isn't proper, but you know, like in person um kind of thing and it it's that was march 7th of last year isn't that insane oh, i might have gotten COVID the day before we met <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i hope i, I didn't give it to you <laughs> no no but that, so that's what i want to talk to you about because that was like like just at the point when i don't think any of us knew what was actually going on like i know that i started working from home two days later like on or no sorry the 16th of March. So like a week later, everything went down in lockdown. Yeah. So essentially, I mean, we don't know for sure, but mm. a bunch of us did go to a birthday party at the monster mm. uh, literally the day before I saw you. And um, we think that was sort of ground zero for a bunch of us. So and you had COVID? I did. Um, Dude, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, it was interesting because uh, at the time, so I went to the party Saturday and then what was it? Tuesday, I went to my friend's show. Uh, it was like a comedy improv, interesting Japanese torture show. Ooh. And we went and had drinks afterwards and found out that I actually slept with her ex-boyfriend while they were dating, but before we were <laughs> friends. So, <laughs> Let's just say there were a lot of drinks that night. Okay. And so I woke up the next day and I felt awful, but I just figured I was hungover. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up doing a comedy show that night, that Wednesday at Caveat. And the two other comics on the show were doing like elbow bumps. And I was like, y'all are crazy. Right. And I even in my set was like, look at all these motherfuckers wearing masks, looking like Mortal Kombat rejects. <laughs> and like, I even made fun of like licking the microphone and like accidentally licked the microphone. And then I woke up the next day with COVID. <laughs> Holy shit, I had no idea. How did I not know this? Well, the reason you didn't know was because at the time there was no testing. Oh, this is true. Unless, okay, so the only way that you could get tested at that point was at a hospital with permission of the CDC. So you had to be like, 
you know, in a bad way. Wow. So basically, so I had to call my work and my work had like a whole thing. And it, at first when it happened, it felt very, I felt like patient zero, but mm -hmm. in hindsight, I was actually kind of proud of my company because they were like on it. They were That's like, great. they had me on the phone with a pandemic specialist. They had me on the phone with a doctor, you know, like it was intense, but it made a lot of sense. Like they were like, no, we're not, we're you know, nipping this in the bud. Right, right. And I talked to a doctor on the phone and I, I didn't have the shortness of breath, loss of taste or smell. I didn't have any of those symptoms. I had mm -hmm. flu like symptoms uh -huh. and I had a fever, but it was like it never spiked super high. I just I felt like shit for like probably a total of 10 days. But wow. I mean, after the fourth day, I was like drinking with James and Mikey, like, you know, yeah, in, yeah. in the house. I just didn't really leave the house, you know? Right, right. But, it was also at the same time when no one knew what the situation was going to be with like grocery shopping right, right. and all that stuff. So I remember standing in Whole Foods feeling like I had the flu with a scarf like triple wrapped around my face, just like, why is my life like this? And I fucking yeah. had COVID, but you know, I didn't know until June wow. when I got. I got tested for the antibodies and they were like, yeah, you had it. And I was like, oh, I see, I see. Oh, oh, wow. And I mean, in hindsight, I feel like an idiot because I mean, there's literally videos at the time I was doing this challenge with Jack, my comedy partner mm -hmm. of like doing 30 thirst traps for March. And <laughs> so there's literally like a picture of like me in a bra and I'm like, it's your favorite influenza, <laughs> influenza Irma. <laughs> Oh my like, God. Well, you know what? You if you can't laugh asshole. about it, if you can't laugh about it, you know, we're all screwed. Well, thank God. I don't think I gave it to anyone um, because I wasn't really, I mean, James and Mikey luckily didn't get it. So they well, had a good viral load or I don't know what you call uh, it. Ooh. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I, you know, I don't know if I ever had it and I never got tested for antibodies, but um, myself and all of my work colleagues, colleagues about like within the span of a month got really, really sick. So I didn't have shortness of breath. I had low grade fever, but I was in bed. I could not get out of bed for like three days. It was mm -hmm. like some like 400,000 pound weight was just on every part of my body. It ached yep. and like, I, I, I didn't know what it was. And it started by the way, um, one night Christian and I are sitting watching TV. It's like two o'clock in the morning. And then all of a sudden it's like, you just like go like this and, and suddenly something is not right. And I went to the bathroom, get this. <laughs> like one of the only people I could talk about this. Hello podcast. Um, you that on your heated toilet seat. <laughs> this, I think this is before the Brundle Swash SC600, which I had to get rid of, by the way. That's a whole other story. It's like painful. Oh, yeah. I can't talk about it. Oh, no. um, sucks. Um, and I, I had vomiting like I've never had vomiting before. Like every cell in my body was like, like this, you know, and, and oh, wow. like retching so bad and so hard all night long. This lasted. Oh my gosh! It's like two o'clock in the morning till about three in the afternoon the, the following day. Oh, that's. I awful. had my rib cage was bruised for weeks. That's I'm how bad sure. it was. Oh my gosh! And then that so after the vomiting, like thank God that stopped. <clears throat> um, I couldn't get out of bed for like three days. It was. Uh, I've never been that sick in my life. So I don't know if it was COVID or what, but. Wow. Um, fuck. Yeah. Anyway, I definitely was lethargic and achy in a way that I hadn't felt really in a long time, if ever. And I just sort of like, just wrote it out. And I mean, I remember yeah. I was still getting auditions. <laughs> and so I remember I had this, this one audition for a Ray Romano show. And I was like, well, I'm, mm. not, pass it. I'm not passing that shit out. Mm -hmm. And it took me, you know, normally a self tape, right? Will take you, you know, some time, you know, you want to shower, you want to, you know, dress <laughs> and put makeup on and you know, part of the character, whatever. Right. Maybe it'll take you, you know, like an hour, two hours max, depending on what the role is, right? It took me like an entire day just to uh -huh. like, just to get like the energy 
It's just like I was just like putting up. Yeah, my yeah. Like, uh, oh, this is oh, this is oh, this is awful. But I and yeah. your eyelashes hurt like that oh, kind of. Everything. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Well, here's to health. Getting through it alive. So yeah, there's something. Thank God, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, when I got sick, it was like middle of February. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. So that's, I got, that's one thing chucked off that how are you yeah. and um, the whole COVID thing. Well, actually, we wanted to talk to you also about um, hopefully New York City is going to be ramping up at some point comedy shows and restaurants and things like that. How has COVID affected sure. your career this past it's, year? You know, it's been interesting. I, I'm actually very grateful, blessed, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to call it lucky because I've worked my ass off for exactly, time. exactly. Um, but ironically, I have had a lot of wins in my career in the past year, and I've been a little quiet about it just to be sensitive for those who have. Oh, I see, I see. You know, I I did share a pretty vulnerable post on on facebook about it because i was just kind of like you know i just didn't want to be insensitive you know yeah, yeah i'm not normally that that way i'm normally like of the belief that you know and a lot of people did confirm this like look you know you sharing this inspires me yes. and i had to remember nice. that for myself but i also was like this time also felt a little different a little more special not, yeah yeah uh you know special and not the best way um mm -hmm. But essentially, I had my most successful year in voiceover yet um, oh. because I, you know, saw what was quickly happening about March. And I said, you know what? I got to get a home studio. I got to get on this. I was just going to ask you that. So you have your own your own thing. That's good. Yeah. And it really was not. I mean, I needed a new computer anyway. I'm like, <laughs> I treat my electronics very well. So I had a MacBook Pro that was 12 years old. Whoa. I mean, everyone was like. <laughs> How does it still work? And I was like, that's a good question. <laughs> I, you know, typically what I'll do is I'll buy the top of the line and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll run it into the ground. So it right. lasts me a really long time. Right. Um, and so I need to get a new computer anyway. I got a new microphone, interface, the whole thing. Nice. And I, I booked a, a nice amount of work this year and I was able to record it from my closet. And, Amazing. you know, it was brilliant. There's a, a thing called Source Connect. They should be paying me, I feel like. <laughs> but it's essentially, it's it's an interface where you can like record live with an actual engineer on the other end. It's oh, really wow. Cool. Wow. You know, have to have a really, you know, high internet connection. Right. And, um, you know, I got to shoot the flight attendant. Uh, no way, you're in that? Oh, I, I have to watch episode, that. Yeah, I was on episode six of the flight attendant. And right. I shot this really weird uh comedic game show for kevin hart um mm. they called it i don't know if it's ever going to get released but it was called lift comics and essentially it was like lyft yeah like the country <laughs> and so I was, it was the first time i ever drove an escalade i guess so i basically had to drive around an escalade what and make my passenger laugh make my passenger in the back laugh and then That's they would genius. rate you as if they were, you know, rating their driver. And then you would get pitted up against another comedian. That and needs to, that needs to be picked up. And that's a genius idea. I'm still waiting. I had a good time. It was like nerve wracking and weird, but like once I got the hang of it, it was actually fun. And I, I did win. Um, <gasps> yes. Thank you. And then you're, you're actually driving. You're not, like yeah i was driving screen. around montclair new jersey <laughs> <laughs> driving a fucking escalade around montclair new jersey i've never driven an escalade so i was like first of all i am they're driving, gigantic aren't I'm they i'm driving a boat I'm i was gonna say a, driving a boat so it's I'm like the size of our living rooms i mean seriously they're <laughs> so wide and i was like and it's amazing because i mean it was a pretty professional production there's like you know, three or four GoPros like in the car filming you. And then in front of you is a minivan with an actual real studio camera on a gimbal. So oh it's my God. Like, and I was like, this is <laughs> dope, but also really weird. So it's like, 
It, it was like one of those things, like, you know, tapping. Yeah, it. right. <laughs> like, how can I drive and be funny at the same time? That is not crap. crazy. That's so fucking cool. So um, did that episode air? Can we see that? Somewhere? No, so it's, I, it's. Oh, it's not. It never. The show itself has never come out. And I don't know if it's still in post-production, if they lost the deal. I have no idea. Um, oh, man. They I hope did. That- I will say cheers to Kevin Hart because they did send me a box of milk cookies for Christmas. Milk cookies? Like, you know, like the company milk that like milk bar, Momofuku mm. milk bar. No, I've never heard of oh, that. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's like. <laughs> really? okay, I'm so still shocked. I feel shocked. like I'm a walking advertisement for these things right now. No, that's okay. I should get I'll... sponsorship. Um, they I'll do one of my really insane milk cookies uh yeah like it's momofuku oh oh right right momofuku is like a noodle bar but then Mm -hmm. they expanded and then they opened up a bakery and their bakery makes like stupid like there's you know a a cookie called like the kitchen sink or something and it's like (laughs) everything you could think of and it sounds terrible and then it's amazing it's like you know peanut butter chocolate and you know i love watching david chang's uh, videos. He does these home, home videos, cooking videos with his beautiful wife and his adorable little kids. Oh, and he's so go. charming. I love that guy. Well, yeah. You now, once you've had one of their cookies, you're gonna be like, no. <laughs> they're stupid. They're really stupid. Oh, I um, have a, pro- I have a product placement that I'm to this day shocked that I say this. Um, a while back, I did this job for. Um, Oatly, the oat milk. Yeah. And the client was such a pain in the ass. I had to end up doing like 30 fucking slides of, we want 1800 dividers. And like, uh, and it just went back and forth and back and forth. And then it came back twice. So I, so Christian was hearing me bitch and stuff. And if I never, if I never see this shit again in my life, I'll be happy. <laughs> so then like fast forward a couple of months, he comes home with a half gallon of oat milk. I'm like, why is that in the house? I mean, I'm, I'm joking, but, um, because honestly, honestly, the idea of it sounded disgusting to me. Like, you know, when you make oatmeal and, you, and I always mix milk in it and you get that stuff around that's delicious, but I don't necessarily want to drink that out of a, its own thing. It just sounded obscene to me. Well, let me tell you what, have you tried it? It's amazing. Oh, I know. It's like, it's actually super creamy and super creamy and Oh my God. Yeah. So there's my product placement Oatly. That'd be awesome if I could get them on the podcast. How about do that? Do it. Do it. Um, Swedish. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> essentially, uh, and I also recently for this week, um, I just booked a role on FBI. Oh my God. Do we didn't, weren't you, you ran an episode of that recently, no? No, I was on SVU a couple of oh, years ago. SVU. It's the same casting director and production company. Awesome. Um, so Were you with Marish Mahardike? Uh, I can't Mahardike. ever pronounce her name. Yeah, yeah she's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, good for you. Gosh, that's Thank so exciting. You. And yeah, and so comedy, although not the same, I've done a lot of shows on Zoom. Uh-huh. And... Um, and then when it was warmer out, I did some outdoor shows and those were awesome. And, um, you know, I bought microphone condoms and felt pretty good about it. And they're like, they're like little, you, you know, if, if it exists, you can buy it on Amazon, right? And it's, it's, they're like little shower caps that you can put on the microphone to sort of- Oh, 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 oh. Because, you know- like dental I'm dams. A, you know me, I'm a very demonstrative sort of like yeah, performer. Yeah. So how many times do I accidentally touch the microphone with my mouth? Yeah. So I was like, no, 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 Rachel needs these. And it's like, you know, I don't know, a box of a hundred for 15 bucks. I was like, it will pay off in dividends. Wow. And um, yeah. Microphone dental dam. Who knew? Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. I should cut that out. Oh my God. Perfect. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> from what I know, from what I gather. Um, um, yeah. So look, long story short, I got COVID out of the way and 2020 uh, into 2021 has been 
a lot of wins, a lot of positive things. And it took a freaking pandemic for me. <laughs> I now have a legit agent for TV and film and voiceover. Oh my God. Oh, that's so exciting. It's like a fucking pandemic. I fucking love hearing that. Good for you. Well earned. Cheers. Cheers, darling. Yeah, so I um, am grateful. Good. I want to talk to you about your trip to Jamaica and period sex. <laughs> Those are related, I'm assuming. Girl, I stalked the fuck out of you, out of your Instagram in the past few days and i'm like i need to know about this oh my gosh okay <laughs> well i am a summer baby i am a cancer like like nobody's business mm -hmm. and i you know between the isolation and oh. just this weather i had just been feeling bleh, you know sad and, right sad lonely Seasonal affective disorder yeah i think I was, it's hilarious that feeling, that's the acronym was, for that i know i was feeling the, the sad <laughs> i was feeling it and i was like i need to get the fuck out of here and mm -hmm. you know i was a little bit mad at myself that i didn't do it when the rates were lower but i was oh. like, you know i i do every year look poor me terrible life i share a house in cherry grove in fire Island, mm. so you know, I was out there a lot this summer and I had just, I didn't jump on it because I was like, oh my God, I don't know, planes. And, mm -hmm. and I did my research and people were like, actually, planes are pretty freaking safe because they're constantly circulating. The I've heard about this. Yeah. Safe yeah. Up there, you know, they're cleaning procedures. And, you know, if you're wearing your PPE, right. and, you know, you're not sitting there like an idiot with your mask off, like you're actually, you're good. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so my friend and I, uh, we got it together and it's, it's pretty cheap to get to Jamaica right now, I'm just saying. Uh, a lot of these Caribbean places are huh? really looking for tourism and for right. in some, you know, like Barbados is encouraging people to work from home from there. Oh. And so I was like, I got to get on this. And my friend Joe, who does my hair, uh, you know, her husband's from Jamaica. They have a house there. And mm. she, so she knew firsthand what it was like there. So that made me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I was originally going to stay in her house. And then she was like, okay, you know, like I was going to pay her, you know, kind of like an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I could do that. I was like, but if I'm going to like get out of here, like on the beach, right? I don't want a little bit of luxury. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Me too. Bit. Me too. So she told me about this wonderful boutique hotel, S Hotel. I will totally promote them because they are gorgeous, wonderful people. Mm. Um, and they're like a little boutique hotel, but they're fabulous. They have like a rooftop infinity pool <sighs> and then like another little pool. And then you're right on the beach and it wasn't crowded. The staff was phenomenal. And yes, I did meet some people, one of whom was a raving idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing this is the period sex part this of the story. Is where we, this is where we segue into <laughs> period sex. So we met this really sweet guy, Trey, from DC. And we just befriended him. He was a really cool dude. And we were hanging out. And he had been texting with some girl from Jamaica. So, you know, when he wasn't hanging out with us or doing his own thing, he would be hanging out with his Jamaican girl. And we were like, all right, dude, do your thing. Get mm -hmm. it, get it, get it, you know? And it felt actually extremely safe because you have to get a COVID test before you go there. Oh, right. Side okay. note, the place that we went, they hand wrote the date and JetBlue did not accept it. So they wouldn't let us on the flight. They insisted that Jamaica was going to deport us. So we oh had to God. call up the clinic, have them type up and email the same exact results and then get on the next flight. So Whoa. first world problems, but also really annoying and frustrating. Right. right. So if you're going to do it, make sure your whole shit is typed out and looks official. Okay. Anyway, okay. we got to Jamaica. They didn't check a fucking thing. So of course not. It's Jamaica. <laughs> I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Anyway. But it was kind of nice because you knew that everyone that was staying in the hotel had had a COVID test, you right, know? Right. And of course, there's margins for error because, like, what did they do the day after the test and God knows what? But, right. you know, and for the most part, everything's outside. 
Right. So exactly. it's just it's just naturally safer. Um mm-hmm. anyway, so uh we were gonna stay for four days, right? And by the fourth day we're like, oh, I wish I could stay another day. Mm. And Trey was really sweet and he was like, Why don't you just stay another day? And we were like, Well, you know, we'd have to rebook our flight and then the price of another night. And he was mm-hmm. like, I'll pay for your night. We were like Whoa. He was like, you know what? I'm doing well. Random acts of kindness. I like you ladies. You're cool. Awesome. And just <laughs> paid for it. And I was like, oh my God. Thanks, Trey. <laughs> Love you, Sugar buddy. daddy me. He was real cute. I mean, if he wasn't on that Jamaican girls, you know what? I would have been like, mm-hmm. what up, Trey? How you doing? <laughs> so it was a very interesting last sort of day because in one in one heartbeat we were like packed up and ready to go mm-hmm. and then in the next heartbeat we were staying so we nice. were like well nice. fuck okay we're staying so then of course it's like ah! <laughs> right and of course it's basically legal to smoke weed in jamaica so like i'm just All right. like, and like there was a bartender earlier in the week who like loved me so just like basically gave me free weed so i'm just like <laughs> No. They're like, damn girl. I'm like, you didn't meet Rachel in high school. She knows how to roll everything. Like nice. I could have nice. rolled you a joint with loose leaf paper. Like, let's be honest. I <laughs> wish I knew how to I you have to show me because I've never been able to to learn that. It's, I didn't even smoke weed, but you just gotta make sure it's an even distribution and you just, you know, it's a very just roll it down, you know. <laughs> anyway. So here we are. And we're drinking uh, Appleton. I had bought some like Appleton Reserve, right? You buy it like duty free. So we're drinking like really nice Jamaican rum and we're smoking weed. We're feeling nice, Mm -hmm. right? And then he's like, by the way, this is my friend, Kenechi. Mm -hmm. He's never gonna listen to this, so I'm not concerned. (laughs) <laughs> I normally don't say people's names, but like, yeah. Right, right, right. So I'm looking at him. We're really big in India, by the way. So just saying. Oh. Seriously. Seriously. Well, like, our numbers in India are like ridiculous. So, I love it. I don't, I don't get it, but. Hey. Well, um, <laughs> this dude was from Nigeria, but he was American, but mm-hmm. of Nigerian descent. So he's drinking white Hennessy. And this is a thing for me because I had only discovered what White Hennessy was about a month ago when there was a snowstorm and my friend Jen, who I was in Jamaica with, heard a man's voice down my hallway. And I live in a very weird sort of condo where no one knows anyone, but everyone mm. knows everyone. It's it's a weird place. <laughs> I probably won't be here that long, but oh no, <laughs> it's fine. But it's it's there's drama. Yeah. What is White Hennessy? I've never heard of White Hennessy. Exactly. No one has, except people who have. Mm. So uh, she went to take out the garbage across the hall. uh, And she like, you know, saw this guy who was making the noise, waved. Next thing you know, five minutes later, there's a knock on my door. And he's like, and I'm like, what the fuck? It's like 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday, right? I'm like, okay. And I opened the door and, you know, he had a mask on and everything. He's like, oh, how you doing? He's like, I've been wondering who's living here. And I'm like, okay, well, okay. he was like, oh, I live down the hallway, whatever unit, 7D or whatever. I was like, oh, I think I've met your older brother, right? Mm-hmm. So he's like the younger brother that like is I've heard about that like always gets fucked up and he's hanging out. <laughs> and um, he's like, you know, it's a snowstorm and like, you know, it's, it's cold <laughs> outside. You know, I got this white Henny. So he's got this bottle of white, white Hennessy in one hand and a Modelo in the next hand. And I'm like, OK, he's like, you know, I see what y'all are doing. You know, you got, I see you got that aromatherapy in the background. Why don't we just hang out? And I'm like, I'm good, actually. But thank <laughs> you so much. Have a great night. You know, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm like, what the fuck is white Hennessy? So I look it up and it turns out that for whatever reason, Hennessy only makes it in the Caribbean and only sells it in the Caribbean. Oh. So, and in the Caribbean, you can get it for like 60 bucks, mm-hmm. but it's like coveted in the US 
And so if you get it in the U.S., which is not even sold here, but like, you know, I guess if you pay the import tax, it's like 200 bucks a bottle. Oof. So it's like a thing. It's like a premium thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Hennessy is already sort of tied to like hip hop culture to begin with. Right, right. Yeah. So they have tons of white Hennessy down in Jamaica and all the Caribbean islands. So Kenechi's drinking his white Henny. And <laughs> long story short, we get to know each other and he and I are quickly flirting and he's, mm -hmm. he's a good looking dude like he is he's fine fine mm -hmm. um you know he's, mm, 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 <laughs> and he's like six three and he's very fascinated that i have an extensive knowledge of underground hip-hop and hip-hop from the 90s like that right. is my shit right 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 and, uh, you know a lot of times people are fascinated by that because i'm i'm white and for me mm -hmm. to like have this ex extensive knowledge of hip hop and underground hip hop. It's it's not typical. Mm -hmm. He was like, damn, you cool as hell. And like, damn, them titties. And you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I am the fucking full package. Thank you for noticing. That's right. I have great tits and I'm fucking smart and I'm funny. You're welcome. Exactly. Bing, bing, bing. Right. So thank you for noticing. Uh, <laughs> and so he like challenges me to like a race and he's like, so we like race in the pool, but he totally cheated. And, um, you know, he keeps insisting on telling me how smart he is. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, it's cute. He wants to prove himself. I went to William and Mary and my dad was a professor and I was a biologist, but I've transitioned into that. I'm like, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, when any guy says to you, I'm not like most guys, that is a red flag. Oh, no kidding. I have learned. Yeah. Like, you need to say that there's a weird thing. Right. Something's right. Wrong. I think also if you have to say, if to prove somebody how smart you are, then I don't know. Thank you. You know what I mean? You'll see what I mean. So long story short, we go up to his room and I start to see more red flags because he was kind of rude to the hotel staff mm. because he had wanted them to clean his room, but genius didn't realize that he had the privacy light on. So they're not going to clean your room if you have the privacy light on. Right. Look, like, well, I didn't put their shit on. They're like, well, it's red. If it's red, we're not going in the room. Right. And then they showed him how to press the button to make it green. <laughs> so, of course, we go in the room. We make out a little bit. You know, he has to take off his shorts because they're wet. Uh -uh. Mm. I'll show you my dick. But I was like... Look, I have my friend downstairs. We can do that later. Cool. Right. So I'm like, okay, he's hot. And at one point he says, he had asked me something. And he said, I guess I maybe I hesitated in my response, which you know me. Mm -hmm. I am not short on opinion. <laughs> I'm not short on expressing myself. Right. But every now and then when I get around a guy I like or a woman I like, I'll, I'll get like a little like, yeah, I'm not a little like, <laughs> My little shy moments it just happened the, the the cancer crab crawls in her shell for a little, bit, <laughs> a little coy but then he says to me you know i like to be in charge or i'm gonna be in charge but once you let me be in charge there's no coming back or something weird mm. and i was like listen i'm not short on opinions and although I like to be dominated in the bedroom, I do not like to be dominated in this world. Mm -hmm. Just so we're clear. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. And I was like, all right. And doubt for, I don't know, for me too, like, I got to know you real well if we're going to, if you're going to be dominant to me in the sack. You know what I mean? I don't, like, I need yeah. to know you that I'm not going to. Well, like, that too. Don't, don't push my head as I'm blowing Oh my you. God. Ew, I can no. hate that. No. Oh my God. Gross. No. no. I mean, allegedly, it's been a long time. So. Mm. <laughs> no, I hate that. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll be better off if you just let me do my thing. <laughs> so, long story short, we all shower. We meet up at dinner. Jen and I get there a little early, or rather on time. They got there late. <laughs> and uh, so we order a bottle of wine. And so, you know, we pour for ourselves. And then the boys finally come. And so, of course, we get some glasses for them and we pour for them, which I shouldn't. You're going to be like, why are you telling me this? But you'll see why. So then he's trying to act all like baller and <laughs> orders a bottle of Moet. 
I'm like, okay, all right, daddy. Okay, get that bottle of my way. Meanwhile, I don't really care about that shit, but it's kind of fun to see this dude like flexing, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. The bottle arrives. And he's one of those dudes that's like, he's rude, but charming at the same time. Mm. So you're like, and he's hot. So he like gets away with it. But you're also like, you're like, you're like turned on, but disgusted all at the same time. And he gets the bottle. And of course, you know, the normal way to pop a bottle of champagne is to just, you know. Just yeah, not like it. this. Yeah. And of course, he has to do the... <sighs> So it makes a big display and, and pokes the waiter's eye out. No big deal. Right. And I was yeah. like, someone's going to die. This is going to pop them in the face. <laughs> They're going to be walking fast. <laughs> so he pops the thing, pours a glass for himself, and then puts it back. What? And so me. And he and I had had a really fun, witty banter all day where, like, we were busting chops, right? Mm -hmm. So I take my glass and I put it down next to him. And I'm like, <laughs> and he was like, what? And I was like, and he flipped out on me. He was like, how dare you? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. And I was like, <clears throat> excuse me? And he was like, you don't do that. That's so rude. That That's just wrong and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay. And of course, luckily, because I was about to flip on him. <laughs> and Jen saw me and she's like, okay, let me ask you this. Rachel and I got a bottle of wine. Um, you handed her your glass and she poured you a glass. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh-huh. She goes, so why is that different? And I said, yeah. I said, why is it a... I said, oh, okay, so you're telling me it's okay for a woman to serve a man, but not okay for a man to serve a woman? And he goes, yeah, I'm from Nigeria. That's oof, not how we oof. do it. And I was like, um, <clears throat> you're not getting this wet ass pussy. We're not in Nigeria and you haven't lived there in like 30 years. So fuck you. Fuck you. Wow. And I literally looked at him and I was like, I'm sorry, my vagina is shriveling up. I'm going to go to the buffet. Um, I was so, <laughs> I'm so angry. So angry. I don't mean to laugh, but that's so, <laughs> so I don't know if I'm telling this right chronologically, but essentially the period sex story, I'm giving you a convoluted response. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. We got time, girl. So essentially what happened was... Um, he started telling us about the woman that he had been there with. He had not come to the resort by himself. Oh. So he tells us this story and essentially uh, she was his booty call back in the Baltimore DC area. Mm -hmm. And he had invited her on the trip. And I was like, first of all, that's not a smart idea. Like if y'all are just <laughs> booty call right. just friends of benefits right. it's probably like a vacation is the next level like you, mm -hmm. there's always going to be expectations involved mm -hmm. and more intimacy whether you want it to be there or not just because you're in the same space for right. days right right so apparently she had called him a couple of days before the trip just to finalize i guess logistics with the airport mm -hmm. and whatnot and I guess in the conversation, it had come up that she was getting her period. And that drove him insane because she should have let him know earlier because had he known, he would have canceled the trip. <clears throat> and Jen and I were like, excuse me? And he was like, yeah. We were like, first of all, women can't always predict when we're going to get it, right. uh, whether we're on contraceptives or not. Sometimes your body just does what it does. Mm -hmm. Second of all, why would you cancel an entire trip? Like there's like there's nothing wrong with period sex. Like, first of all, take it a shower, do it in the shower, put down a towel. There's so many things. And if anything, women are more sensitive during that time and sometimes have better orgasms. So better for you. And like, 
if you're wearing a condom, who gives a shit? Right, well. I mean, but this dude, who the fuck, who even knows what he's doing? Oh, it's That's so about hard. 18 red flags right there. Oh my God, so much. And so, so, all these things, you know. So antiquated, you know? Yeah. And then Trey, who we thought was just a little bit more woke, he was like, yeah, I don't think I'd be into that either. And we were like, seriously, dude? And he was like, well, you know, I really like to like, you know, go down on a woman as like part of the whole thing. And I was like, you know what, dude, first of all, I met a guy go down on me with my period. You plug that shit up with a tampon or a diva cup. <laughs> also, it's about several inches above the hole where the blood comes out. Right, right. So fuck off. Like, just stop. Stop with your, your, it's some antiquated, misogynistic, Machismo bullshit. you know, just some bullshit, like some antiquated bullshit bullshit and, we were and you y'all like, are having dinner so it's not like you're, you're having drinks and you're like i oh, see ya so you're stuck there the whole fucking time <laughs> fucking dinner. yeah exactly. The worst. and so then like of course he like still wanted to ha- so trey goes after dinner to go fuck his woman in the room we're still stuck with kanachi and he just kept digging the hole further and further and further and because he he was like yeah, I don't know what's up with Biden and all this LGBTQ shit. And I was like, excuse oh me? God. Oh, my God. Excuse? What? What are you trying to say? What? I, w- I was not having can I, it. Can I just say right there, when you do that excuse me thing, you should film that and then interject that in any <laughs> video you do because it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's a great thing to have in your in your. Just make a uh, make a GIF, GIF whatever you. Call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was oh, so man. I was so angry, and then of course he had to continue going on. I have an IQ of one sixty two, and I went to William Mary, and I looked at him and I said, "You know what? People who are truly intelligent don't need to prove it." Right. Right. I, and he was like, Ugh. I was like, and actually you're lacking in emotional intelligence and common sense. And he was like, what do you need that for? And I was like, exactly. Oh. All right. One second. I need to take a break and refresh my cocktail. Ah, yes. So you may do it as well. I'll be right back. <laughs> I don't want to give him more airtime. No, um, no. It just, it, I was like, I have to share about this um, <laughs> because it's so ridiculous and literally he talked himself out of the pussy yeah exactly i exactly. was very clear at the beginning of that day that i was gonna fuck him and it was gonna mm-hmm. be really fun vacation fucking i was gonna enjoy myself it was gonna be like yeah extra day <laughs> yes <let's laughs> go. All right, this is on your extra day as well. And I right. and, and he literally talked himself out of the puss. Um, thank you for telling that story and thank you for using the word literally correctly, because it drives me fucking crazy <laughs> when literally. people say literally, like I literally lost my mind or you know, Do I you literally bled have, out. Have you watched this season of The Bachelor? <laughs> Uh, no. Should I? Probably I not. I, probably I not. I probably not. I only got interested in it because finally they had a man, they had a person of color as the bachelor. Was the only reason I was even mildly interested like, in it. For the first time? For the first time. Mm-mm-mm. And so I was like, okay, and he's like, cute. So I, I wouldn't like, even I wouldn't even watch a gay version. Oh, that. it's oh, it's horrendous. It's I so mean, gross. I have watched some really trashy reality shit in quarantine, just because you know mm, mm, mm. there's a lot of time in front of the screen. Me too. Something that I realized during quarantine, and Christian still yells at me or laughs at me for this. Um, I enjoy action adventure movies. Oh, that is okay. <laughs> like I never. No, I mean, I I always like that. Oh, you know, no, 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 no. I'm watching. In the beginning of the pandemic, I'm watching like that movie with The Rock. Cause I love him and I would <laughs> kiss him and I would hold him and squeeze him and make him my very own. Um, that movie San Andreas. 
Oh, I didn't see it. I fucking loved it. And Christian's like, that's the worst of the kind of <laughs> genre of that that genre of movies that you can watch. And I'm watching all these like, you know, Armageddon and like Oh yeah. Whole <laughs> City's Catch on Yeah, I lived with James. I have watched <laughs> every X Men, Captain America, friggin' mm. oh my god, you name it. I have that's, that's another thing, by the way. I also am really into that stuff now. I didn't think it's I would. Fun. Be. It's really way more intellectual than I thought it was, to be honest. You know what? Look, a lot of these things are an allegory for the current exactly. state of the world. Exactly. You know, you come to find out, I never realized that Wonder Woman had, you know, tie, like not ties, but like, you know, covered nazi themes and yeah i don't i don't you know i'm sitting here like yeah like i don't know i didn't know that <laughs> i'm pretending like i know what you're talking about well anyway it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't even matter but like there there's in the first wonder woman um there there's actual it, it refers to nazi germany and all sorts of things and like how it was tied in and you just realize whether it's a, a lot of adventure and sci-fi i mean mm -hmm. star trek now we're right. really learning up again also thanks to james um right. so much of it really they would touch on themes that people were afraid to touch on and, mm -hmm. and you know whether it was um racism anti-semitism gender sexuality really right. really fascinating stuff yeah i want to i want to get back to something real quick um yeah. we were talking about this earlier in um oh wait hold on in the video settings, you know, we talked about the fact that the touch of my appearance Such thing used to be just the toggle, used to be just on and off. So watch what happens. I become, I become one of the women on the TV show Star Trek. <laughs> like, um, Vaseline screen. I might just keep it on there. So I move it down a little bit just to, so that my zip can show up and I don't look too unapproachable i um, have noticed it had you not pointed it out <laughs> <laughs> um yeah the the funny um bedfellows uh in terms of you know what we did what we all had to do to kind of get through um covid and 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 the the isolation i think is the thing for me was like the hardest you know because i tend to be kind of a hermit to begin with I mean, that shocks people when I say that, but I'm like, I really would just rather have a few people over and drink wine than go out. I just, I don't know. No, but, I um, think I could get that. Yeah. Um, oh, so there's a few things about on your Insta that I wanted to talk to you about. Mm. Um, tell me about virtual Yoohoo Room comedy show. That sounds fun. Oh, that was just a comedy show that was um, like Zoom, though, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I like to say that I was the first person to think of it. I think mm. I was, to be mm. honest with you, at uh -huh. least first person in New York. Um, That's pretty March, awesome. I did the I did a Zoom show on March thirtieth, which I think was one of the first, if not the first, Zoom comedy show. Um, a lot of people were doing Instagram live, Facebook live. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is awful because yeah. you do those. It's like performing to a brick wall because, you know, people can comment, but I was like, oh, I know. What, I what, what, what is it that gives comedians life laughter? Right. We need a response. It, right. It's call and response. So I said, what if we do it on zoom? And I just, I give a strong disclaimer at the beginning of the show. I explained to people. And like, look, we're very fortunate. The Venus flytrap, we have a very loyal fan base. And mm -hmm. so, and I, I set it up and I said, listen, you know, and of course, like a, a good percentage of our audience due to Jack the Stripper being my co-producer, you know, we have a lot of sex workers who really love the show because we're very sex positive. We're very LGBTQ positive. And so people feel like it's a safe space and it's, it's a space right. where, okay, people are talking about shit I want to hear about, you know, people right. are saying the things that these other fucking comics are, you know, not talking about or they're making fun of or they're misinformed or whatever. Right. And so I had set it up in a way that I was like, look, tipping is encouraged. 
Mm-hmm. I want you, if you like a comic, tip the comics. Right. And if you're not sure where you want to give your money, tip me and all of my proceeds will go to the CDC. Nice. Because at nice. the time I was like, we don't know what the fuck is going on. Let's just put it in a good place. And we had 175 people. Wow. Wow. Which was amazing. Let me, let me ask you, you want, you, how did technologically, technologically, um, how did you get the laughter to be a part of it? Like, how does that so, work? So essentially what I did was in the beginning, I said, hey, y'all, um, I think I hosted. Yeah. I said, listen, I said, this is, you know, we can't be in person right now. Mm-hmm. This is the best we're going to get for live comedy. So, you know, if you're multitasking, if you're vacuuming, if you're changing your baby's diaper, if you're washing dishes, if you're doing any of that shit, I love you, but mute yourself. But if, you know, you have the time and the space, I want you to sit down on your couch. I want you to grab your cocktail, your weed, whatever your thing is. Mm -hmm. And when you sit back and relax as if you're in a comedy show and I want you to hit unmute. And I want to hear that laughter. Genius. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's such a great idea. Thank you. And it was it was brilliant. And and like the comedians who were on the show were like, oh my God, thank you so much. That gave me life. And oh, holy shit, I didn't know how much I missed it. And it had only been a couple of weeks, but it, you know. Is there a way to put a link in the show notes? Do you have a link to to see that? Is it on YouTube or something? Um or is it just a one out only? It. We didn't record it. Um, okay, okay. But yeah, no, a lot of people, you know, they do record it either for themselves and essentially what you were specifically asking about the, the Yoohoo or Yahoo or whatever it was, that was for, uh, the comedy club flappers out in California and that was, right. Right. Yeah. So uh, look, I feel like there's always pros and cons to everything. Mm -hmm. I try to put a positive spin on shit. Right. What's been nice about it is I've done comedy shows with people out in LA, people in Chicago, people in Florida. And at this point, you could do a comedy show with anyone, anywhere, at any time if you want. Exactly. To. So cool. Gosh, you it's know, great. Just, look, are you going to get the same feedback and energy you would at a live show? No, it's, mm-hmm. it's not the same thing. And you have to walk into it knowing that and appreciating that. Right. Um, right. But some people have been very generous with their tipping um, mm. and just really appreciative. And for some people, they're really grateful because they're like, I'm sitting in my fucking living room. Right. I want some personal interaction. I want some live entertainment, but right. I don't feel safe going outside. Right. Here we go. Another cheers. That's beautiful. It's a yeah. really important thing I think that you've done, seriously, for all of those reasons. Yeah, you know, a lot of there's like a good handful of comics out there who have like really just refused to do it and they've shit on it. But I'm like, you know what? It's the same thing that I used to feel about like doing shows in a bar, right? Like there mm-hmm. was fucking like, oh yeah, so uh, I'm performing in the fucking basement of a bar. Uh, <laughs> fuck you guys. What's my life about? And it's like, okay, well these people are sitting there, giving you their attention and their time. Right. So how about you use this as an opportunity to perform? And right. you know what? Some of my best shows where I've had like improvisational genius things I thought of in the moment have been for like audiences of like three, five, <laughs> eight people right. where we're just having a conversation and some fucking brilliant thing pops out of my mouth. And th- as soon as the show is over, I'm putting it in my phone. <laughs> You know, and it's become like one of my best yeah. shows. So you just, there's always an opportunity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't wait to do that again and come see you again. Yeah. Like in a rot in a in a April third. April third. Okay. April third, the comedy club at the Lantern at the comedy club. All the comedy clubs. Mm-hmm. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Tibetan food right there. It was good. Oh, nice. Um, April third. Uh, comedy clubs are allowed to open. Uh, Writing this down. Thirty-three percent capacity. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm actually 
getting vaccinated April 9th. So, you know. Cheers. I have a story for you. Let's go inside, you know. Um, here, let me show you. So we have a friend who is a doctor at the Wyckoff Heights Medical Center in, in Bushwick. Okay. And he's like, hey, you guys wanna, wanna call the shot? Now, normally I would be like, no, let, you know, let the octogenarians and stuff and the teachers and the bus yeah, drivers yeah. and that, but they're already in the pipeline. You know what I mean? And my uh, whole thing is their appointments and yeah. And my whole thing is, let me just show you this. If you can see. Hey. Oh, it's reverse block. No, I can see it. Well, we had our first shot the day before my birthday on Thursday. Ah. And the second one is on the 25th. And I can't tell you um, immediate relief immediately you know that's one huge um major amount of anxiety that's not there so much anymore you know and my my main reason because i was just gonna wait i was just like i can wait you know i'm healthy and i, I you know i want these other folks to get it but my main reason was Christian has been going into work the entire time, working in a veterinary office, you know, taking the train both ways the whole time. And for some fucked up reason, veterinarian is not considered healthcare. It's like the pets walk themselves in and check in. And oh my gosh. Seriously, you're dealing with so you're many dealing people. with pets and their owners and that's essential worker. He literally works on the front desk and runs a front desk in a veterinary office. And like, why is that not? So he's, you know, he got to a point where he was like, like bawling about being upset about it. And I was like, look, you know, our friend, the doctor offered us this opportunity and I'm gonna do it. So this was Thursday before my 55th birthday on Friday, girl. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> my age is a palindrome, how cool is that? Cheers. And we did it. And mm, and check this out. This is the weirdest thing. I mean, this is this is sort of what told me, like, okay, you're in the right place right now. So we had to wait quite a while to get up to the floor where they actually do the inoculation. And you, you get off the elevator and there's this like waiting room. And I, I wasn't sure do we have to wait here or do we go into the room? So I'm like, you know, trying to be all, you know. Mm, sure sure you know i and i looked at this nurse and i said do we do we go in there or do we she's like how are you what are you doing here scott it's so good to see you and i'm like panicked now because i didn't recognize this person until because <laughs> i hadn't seen face her in mask. years and face mask and she's blonde now and she flips over her badge and says like patty bauer like holy shit oh my god he's in charge of the whole thing up there and it just, it was just great. I have to say though, for me, and I'm the only person I, that I've spoken to that's gotten a shot, it hurt like a motherfucker. They go right into your muscle. Yep. Christian didn't feel it. Everyone else I've spoken to doesn't feel it. So I'm not trying to scare you or anything. Oh, but... no, no, no. No, a lot of people have had that. My friend, really? had, my friend had a lump in her arm for like a week. So, um, and had pain and my parents, <laughs> Uh, had a very negative reaction to the second shot. I've um, heard the second one is kind of. Yeah, um, they both felt like crap for like four or five days. But you have to think about the alternative, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And mm. you know, look, am I a firm believer in an Eastern philosophy where having a strong immune system right. and having a strong microbiome in your body and the whole thing? Yeah, obviously, but you know what? You have to think about other people. You know, exactly. Did I get exactly. it, uh, did I get it badly compared to most? No. Did I get long term effects? Thank goodness, no. But do I want to help 
towards the greater good? And do I want to be able to perform in public and not feel like I'm putting myself or other people at risk? Right. Yeah. Right. So fuck, I'm going to get the fucking vaccine. Right. You know? Yeah. So cheers to that. Um, cheers. So, and cheers <laughs> to, um, cheers to being chubby uh, because it's, <laughs> It's essentially. You wonder? Did you wonder why my screen is so dark? <laughs> you look great. Stop. And it. like when I when I stand up, it's like I I, I walk backwards like this. <laughs> Stop. And then I'm like, oh, now I can turn to my side. You know. Look, no, fuck but it. like, look, you know, I was like, oh, BMI <laughs> above thirty. Oh, I got that. I got that. <laughs> I'm good. I don't even want to know what mine is at this point. I'm good. But, you so, know, yeah, so the I way I look at it, like, you know, the, the one of the things I love about you is the whole body positivity thing. And I thought about, like, should I talk about this? Because I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a bitch. Like, the fact that I'm so overweight right now, like, I, I, nothing fits me. I can't wear any pair. Of, I, I've been in sweatpants for like a year. Um, it's previous tough. previous to COVID though, like I lost 30 pounds. I went on co I went on COVID. I went on <laughs> I went on keto and I watched like minimum 10,000 steps a day. And like I miss that. I need to start getting back to to both of those things. And I did it really pretty quickly. Like in three months, I lost 30 pounds. Keto well, first of all, keto is very easy to do that. Um look. Don't be hard on yourself. We're no, no, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. Like literal pandemic. Right. It's like I, I it, right. I've had to say this to myself as much as I've said it to other people. It's like anything that's happening right now is not typical, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's been ways in which everyone's just been like just. We're all in survival mode, unfortunately. Exactly. And survival mode is not necessarily thriving mode, right? So right. we've all looked at different ways to cope. And so whether that's mm -hmm. food or alcohol or some people drugs, and mm -hmm. we all have to be compassionate to ourselves and to other people because it's like, it's just, we're just trying to, to get through. And it's like, yep. you know, do little things each day to make yourself feel good. You know, I was very fortunate that Jen turned me on to this like daily weekday workout that I do on Zoom now. So now I work out five days a week because I have a nice. community that expects to see me at 1 p.m. Eastern every day. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, and and then I got my mom into it. And so that's really cool because I feel like I'm doing something to contribute to her health. Right. And my dad sort of does it half-assed in the background. <laughs> like, like my mom's doing jumping jacks and you see my dad's <laughs> feet on the couch going like this. That's so awesome. So, you know, just try to do what makes you feel good, but also don't be hard on yourself. Like I did, I did like, uh, oh my God, ew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, wait. Hold Isn't that on. Awesome? I shown you? Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> wait for it. Let me see. I hope I can find it quickly. Now, what I what's annoying to me is like on the video settings, I I click on mirror my video. Oh, now yeah. it does it. Oh jeez. I had it on the wrong thing. Wait, hold on. I want to find it for There you. we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wait for it. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> that is that is so it's so realistic, it's scary. It's weird, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks really real. Unfortunately. So things like this I do also. Like um you know, if I would have to wear a mask, I would at least want to wear something cool or interesting or you know, a little, yeah. it's the little things. I, I have one I that's um, Starry Night that I get a lot of compliments on. Oh, nice. And I have another one with unicorns. So mm, mm. I know. I'm like, fuck unicorns it. Unicorns are evergreen. A, I'm going to make it fashionable. Right. Exactly. Like Christian Sierra has these that are like uh, bedazzled or 
like oh, Seagrand nice. or something. Yeah. I would love to get one of those, but um, two things I want to know about that ginormous sports bra. <laughs> and if you want to bring that out, that would be cool. <laughs> and the Wonder Woman costume, was that from James? You said my roommate gave me this costume? Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. I will. <laughs> Please, please. All right, I'll pull out the prop. <laughs> Let's see. I think awesome. I actually talk about it when I do I when I do my that. when I do my COVID set, as I call it. So, um, during the beginning of the pandemic, so many people were sending me the meme of women in Asia repurposing their bras as face masks oh i saw that yeah yeah and i'm like <laughs> well that <doesn't> really <laughs> work for me <laughs> yeah so it actually looks like a hat. it actually looks like a legit hat and it kind of matches your outfit which is kind really of match cool. i love leopard print <laughs> damn it actually looks like I had it. No joke. There you go, even more. What's up, girl? How you doing? <laughs> A little black under your left yeah. eye. Exactly. You know. Um and then <laughs> this crazy thing. Oh my god. Okay, so the story of my current apartment. So yes, that oh, was okay. because you didn't know the context. So that is so cool. So what happened was... Uh, what happened was... What happened was... <laughs> so, um, Jan around January, February of last year, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. uh, James decided to randomly, out of the blue, float the idea past me that he and Mikey were thinking of moving in together. Oh, okay. And it took me by surprise. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay. Because you guys were roommates. Let's explain that. Yeah, we were roommates for five years. And, mm -hmm. and I knew eventually, you know, we would move apart. But I just assumed that my next living space would be with a romantic partner. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't necessarily in a rush. But I hoped at some point it would happen soon. And mm -hmm. whatever. So he floated that idea past. And I was a little bit taken by surprise but i said okay so i started looking at my options because it mm -hmm. wasn't happening immediately mm -hmm. and there was all this drama with mikey's roommate and it turned out she was possibly like a little bit homophobic and she was gonna like charge extra rent because they weren't married oh it was, no it was a mess but in the process this is in new york city by the way <sighs> right mm -hmm. but in the process of all of this I started really looking at my options and what was out there. Mm -hmm. And my friend who lives in Astoria, who had been telling me about, she has a studio that she really loves. And it's right on the water. It has this mm. gorgeous view and it's pretty spacious for a studio. And she'd been telling me about this for a long time. And we've known each other since high school. Mm -hmm. And I just never seen it. And she had essentially met a guy in this building about a year prior they've been dating for a year and she was spending half of her time or a lot of her time in his place because he has a two bedroom oh. so she was like why am i paying rent and also you're awesome you should just take my studio and i'll move upstairs with my boyfriend and i was like nice. i don't know and you know james and i had this lovely huge two bedroom with a rooftop you know mm. that we loved but then I was like, let me go check this out. And I went and checked out the studio. And I said, you know what? This is actually really like well appointed. I can show you. Actually. So you're in the studio now and you're on the water. Okay, so here's the kitchen. Nice. Nice kitchen. Right. And, then and you have a Rhoda cutout or like a Mary Richards cutout. Yeah. I and then, that. you know, I got the couch and the bed. And Jeez. then this, oh. gorgeous, the gorgeous view. Is that a patio? It's a balcony. Uh, oh it's man! Out, but I'm all about that. The, oh, that's the bat. Look at that! Wow. That's the triborough. That's the city. That's amazing. 
All right. <clears throat> Good for you. Thank you. So I was like, okay. And then, you know, you have your little TV and nice. that's all you need, right? Right. It's just really well set up and it's got a shit ton of closet space. And that's where I record my stuff, which is very important. <laughs> and so, so that was that. And so anyway, I, ended I up promise you this time I'm going to come see your apartment because I'm really bummed that I never got to you. You're in James's yeah, place. Yeah, it was. When we nice were neighbors. Apartment. I know it was a nice apartment. Here we go. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh, but this, the, the one Roman thing. So Lauren, who I went to high school with, um, she said, I left you a surprise in the closet. Oh, no way. <laughs> and so when I moved in, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. She said, yeah, it doesn't fit me anymore. And I figured that was a good housewarming present. <laughs> and it looks really well made as well. It's really Like it's cool. not fucking. It's really cool. I don't know where she got it. It's like official, like Wonder Woman. Like DC Comics and has uh, like a, about like a backdrop. Oh my god, I love it. I mean, you saw it though. I don't really fit in it. I fucking spill out of it, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> like I couldn't really wear it out. I'd probably have like immediate, just like you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could possibly tighten up the straps, but you can also see my bra straps are typically much thicker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it is a fun thing. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I could probably fit in that at this point. Um, <laughs> I think I think I have all. Um, oh, it, if so, I tried to um, and this could probably be offline, but I tried to download some clips of you um, audio and or video. But it wasn't letting me do that on your website or on YouTube. So if you have you anything, you could probably play them live if you want to, or I could send them to you offline Ooh. afterwards. I mean, if there's something you wanted to play right now, you can do it. Or I, I think I'd play. rather do it, uh, like in post. Mm -hmm. Because you know I do post production audio and video you now. Do. You also have your it's just better than that. That way I get to say you know, and and after we do this, I'll be like. Let's look at Rachel's blah blah blah, you know, and then I'll sure be able yeah, to bracket that. Definitely, um, I could send you some things. Okay, no rush. <laughs> Thank you for this. This is really yeah. nice. Soon, <laughs> so you're getting your April 9th, your first shop. Yeah, apparently. I mean, I know some people who just keep refreshing and refreshing, and I guess you can hop on it sooner. You can get a okay. sooner appointment and then cancel your later appointment. Okay. Um, but I'm like, I'm not really in a rush. I right. Just, I want to get it somewhere in the vicinity of now in April so that I can perform and feel good about it. Because literally, <sighs> there was a comic recently who apparently had COVID and was still out performing mm -hmm. at indoor and outdoor shows. Oh. Uh. Uh, and it was like this thing where like he felt sick, he went and got tested, and I guess he got both the PCR and the rapid. Mm -hmm. the rapid was negative, but the PCR was positive. I hear that a lot. And but at that point, he should have stayed home. And he did this like, well, I felt okay, so I so I went out. Well, fuck, fuck you, fuck mm -hmm. you. Like, mm -hmm. that's when you need to quarantine for, like, 10 to 14 days just to be safe. And he was yeah. like, well, all the other people in my life tested negative, but I felt okay. And it's like, yeah, well, now that the comedy community has canceled you, now you're apologizing. Because oh. you got shut down. Meanwhile, right. I don't even know who the fuck this kid is. Like, <laughs> but, you know, I've never heard of this dude in my life. It's like some newer comic. And I'm yeah. like... And, you know, people, no, no one really chastised me for it. I mean, people understood, but I had been offered a couple of indoor shows and mm -hmm. I turned them down because I was mm -hmm. like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't trust that you guys follow any sort of social distancing. 
you know right right or, or, or anything that's gonna make me feel comfortable I, I i was like look eight minutes of stage time is not worth my health <laughs> yeah. or or the health yeah. of my parents because i because right that's exactly because everyone knows how like yeah uh clean and sterile comedy clubs are <laughs> like the worst place <laughs> the dirtiest places on earth you Literally. know what can we just talk about for a second real quick um <laughs> the dirtiest places on earth <laughs> i and this is not even specific to comedy clubs but you know when you go to certain bars and i think like bars that don't have dishwashers with like 300 mm -hmm. degree water and they take the glass you've seen this thing there's like these brushes and they go and put it through the water and then it's done i'm not a germaphobe but that's disgusting yep Especially when there's like lipstick on it. And oh, girl. Oh, that never girl. even comes close to coming out. <laughs> no, I know. What I remember doing? a bar that had those fucking brushes. Oh. Sorry, that's just not. Cute. No, it's gross. It's gross. And there was a funny video that my friend Melanie Vesey put up. And it was so fucking, it was so spot on. She's like our generation. She mm -hmm. lives in. She lives in LA now, but she grew up in New York. Thank you for and saying our generation, because I'm like 10 years older at least. Than you, but whatever. Love you. Love you. Love generation. You. But <laughs> like it was, I have to find it and send it to you. She did it on TikTok, but it's, and mm. I'm not a huge TikTok person. I'm trying to get into it. Mm -hmm. But um, she had these great like photos in the back, because you know, you could do the green screen. Uh -huh. And it was like, listen. If you went to the bathroom at CBGB's, oh. you can get the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> if you were at the limelight and you found a bag of drugs on the floor and you weren't sure what they were, but you did right, them anyway, right, right. you can take the vaccine. <laughs> you know, if you drank a 40 in the <laughs> wetlands and made out with the bouncer, the vaccine is afraid of you. Like it's such, it's such That's a genius. Game. Don't worry about the vaccine, New York City nightlife, Gen X edition. If you ever went to the bathroom at CBGB, girl, do not worry about what is in the goddamn vaccine. If you ever sat on the couches in the basement of the wet lounge drinking a 40 and making out with the door guy, you don't need to worry about what's in the vaccine. If you couldn't live without the carrot ginger dressing from Waffle Cafe or the soy burger dinner from Dojo, <laughs> you are fine. If you ever found baggies of drugs on the bathroom floor, the limelight, palladium, or red zone and didn't know what they were, but did them anyway, <laughs> then the vaccine is afraid of you. Call your doctor. It's... You remember, I think it was the lure. Um, it wasn't the eagle. Unless back in the day, the Eagle had a gift shop. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because this is what I remember. My my ball gags and thongs. I mean, what's in their gift shop? <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting to it. Hold on. Um, I'm pretty it. sure it was the Eagle back in the day. It had a gift shop, like legit gift shop. So of course, I'm all about gift shop. For you know, when I go to a museum, I like the. The thing that I most want to do, like fuck the Renoir, I want to look at the gift shop and stuff. So I go into this place and I'm just on my own. My roommates are out doing their thing, and I'm looking around at this. It's the usual stuff, you know, like dildos and butt plugs and ball gags and all this stuff. Then I see this, and it was like beautifully lit in this glass case, and it was like this open, um folio like blue velvet lines wooden case and this is before i knew what sounding was do you know what sounding is no sounding is when so it's let me just explain so there there was like there was like 10 or 12 of these things and it went all it went from like maybe a three millimeter diameter to like to like that you know and they were beautiful they were stainless steel they were shiny they were lit really well and i'm and i'm going like and it said sounding rods or something and i'm like no idea what that was and so i turned to the guys in full leather 
regalia. I said, sorry, can you tell me what, what is that? What are, what, are the, what are these things? And they said, it's a thing that guys do, certain guys do. You put them through your urethra. <gasps> and apparently it stimulates in a way that, you know, that's kind of the only way you can get that kind of sensation. And I was like, oh, okay. Never in my life. <laughs> I've never known so, anyone to do it. It's like putting a pitchfork in your dick? But it's smooth. It's a single rod. And, you know, again, it goes from like this to like this. Maybe not like that. Maybe like that. But, yeah, it's a thing, apparently. It's called sounding. I'm, I actually taught you something. I'm like yeah, over the moon yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I taught Rachel Green something about sex. I don't even know if I'd consider that sex, though, honestly. That's just like, well, okay. look, have at it. The reason I asked if it's like a pitchfork, because with sounding, like sounding, I'm like, do you hit it and it like vibrates? Like, like is it Wouldn't like that be a, funny if it was like a tuning fork as well as a like sounding? an A, like an A sharp, <laughs> like a B flat. You know, considering that they're different um, diameters, like that would actually be well just because they they chose the term sounding i'm like oh i know i don't know where that comes from i'll look it up and i'll do some research i'll, I'll make sure that i go on my um no. what do they call that um i want to know <laughs> incognito i'll go on incognito sounding <laughs> sounding Sounding is the act of inserting a metal rod into your urethra <laughs> Where are you getting this from? Just regular Urban Google? Dictionary. Urban, oh, Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Google that shit, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Um, sounding tubes are meant to be used medically, but some people figured out oh. that experience sexual pleasure from the act. The reason for this being that the sounding tube can reach very sensitive parts inside your penis bleh, that if stimulated can create some very intense orgasms. Oh. So I guess you're jerking off with the thing in, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, anytime <laughs> I've seen a, I have seen porn with that, I thought it was a form of like, you know, BDSM torture, but I guess it can be pleasurable. No, it's pleasurable. I think that's a really good place to end the podcast. What do you think? <laughs> on that note, Wait. on this. I just have to say this. Yeah, yeah. So if you go if you go to Urban Dictionary and you type in sounding, sounding is the first thing that pops up. But for some reason, right underneath it comes up la chancla, which is the Spanish word for flip-flop. <laughs> That's odd. I, I don't know why that oh, would it's be. Oh, appa it's apparently was the March 6th word of the day. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it was so good to see you again. You too. Um, let's do this again. I just want to do it in person. I want to see you in person go up. Oh, I know. You. I know. Well, when we're all vaccinated, yeah. hopefully that can be a thing. And like outdoor dining, like or, or we'll just get like sandwiches and sit in a park somewhere, you know. Like I, uh, yeah. I love that. I'd love to do that. Like the oh my high God. Or... When the weather gets warm, I am outside all day, every day. I mean, all I was right. outside today, and it was thirty degrees out because I was like, <laughs> "Mama needs fresh air." <laughs> I know. True. I, I know. Well, look, you saw it's a nice studio, but it's a studio, so I yeah. need yeah. to get the fuck out. All right, we'll do it soon. I love you. I love you to death. Yay. Have a good night. Don't go away. Way Off the Record has been written, edited, and produced by Scott Ambrosino. Also produced by Christian Hernandez. And we are available on all platforms where you get your podcasts. And drop us a line on social media. We can be reached at the at sign W-O-T-R pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.